I read parts of the Senate Committee on Homeland Security's memo about the staggering security failures that day. And I want to relay some of them to you. You know, on, in, during the first week of July, the, this is from the, the memos I mentioned, and they did interviews of local law enforcement, Secret Service agents, the counter sniper team. And right now they're really just collecting statements. It's difficult to piece together a narrative when you're just kind of sourcing people's accounts of the day. But what we do know is that during the first week of July, Secret Service was notified of credible intelligence of a threat. So much so that they sent a special sniper team to that July 13th rally in Butler, Pennsylvania because of that credible intelligence. I'm reading here from the memo. They say that it's the first time that this counter sniper team was assigned to a protectee other than the president, the vice president, or a presidential candidate who has already secured the nomination. So we know that they had evidence of this threat. They, we know that it was so threatening that they sent this counter sniper team, which they usually don't do. And then that day, according to this Senate report, and by the way, how many people know this? How many people are aware of any of the details that I'm telling you right now? That Secret Service on the day of the rally was notified of a suspicious person with a rangefinder 27 minutes before Thomas Matthew Crooks fired the gun on the rooftop. And so we see here that they were told of this person walking around with a rangefinder. A rangefinder, as you may know, is the device that people use in order to locate their target. And then, staggeringly, this Senate report has a quote here that they lost track of the individual and that there were many members of the United States Secret Service who didn't even know in the first place that they had located a suspicious individual. Quote, the U.S. Secret Service lead agent, site agent, and site counterpart all told the committee that they did not receive information about the suspicious person and therefore did not know that law enforcement had identified a suspicious person with a range finder and that those local officers later lost track of the individual. Now, let me ask you a question. This is 27 minutes before Thomas Matthew Crooks fired the, the shots. Thomas Matthew Crooks fired them at 6.11 p.m. on the rooftop. The rally was only seven minutes in when he fired those shots. And so if 27 minutes before the shots were fired, it's about 5.45 p.m., if they are finding out even before the rally has started that there's a suspicious person with a rangefinder, and then they lose that person, why would you even start the rally? It's not like the rally's going on and you may have to pause the rally. By the way, big deal if they have to pause the rally. I have a feeling that the people in the audience will stay and they will still support Donald Trump even if the rally is paused for a moment. But the rally hadn't even begun. And you're telling me that during the first week of July, they get credible intelligence of a threat for that rally? so much so that they send a special counter sniper team to the rally and then on the day of the rally they identify a suspicious person with a rangefinder and they lose that person and they still start the rally it is horrible and as we just heard from the first lady she's watching this on live television her son comes running in this man could have died and yes, this could just be gross incompetence and negligence. But it does appear that there were too many strange things going on to totally attribute that to just incompetence and negligence. It very, very well could just be total incompetence and negligence. But, you know, interestingly, we even heard from the sheriff of Martin County. This is in, the, in September. This is after the assassination attempt 12 days ago against the president at the Trump International Golf Course in Palm Beach, we heard that sheriff of Martin County say in a statement that there may be a conspiracy. 
he kind of hinted at it. I don't know if we have the audio. It's completely fine if we don't, Sean. No, we don't have the audio. But this individual, I played it on my show, the sheriff was saying, how did this man know where Trump was going to be that day golfing? And so there's just a lot of factors here that we really ought to scrutinize. And what's really troubling about this is that the American people generally don't seem to know about them or care.